Hello, my name is Nathan Brown. And I'm Zach Hondrew. And we are students of Aberfoyle Park High School, South Australia. Our research topic was the climatic conditions in Australasia during the last glacial maximum and the possibility of a reoccurrence of ice age conditions in the near future. The Pleistocene Ice Age, which began about 2.6 million years ago and ended 11,700 years ago, had constant rises and falls in global temperatures and was in essence a clim climate roller coaster. Each cycle of hot and cold lasted for thousands of years and according to Adams of Oak Ridge National Laboratory USA, approximately 15,000 years ago, one of these heat cycles was in effect and a gradual but large increase in warm, in warm climate appeared giving rise to the modern climate. When the ice sheets retreated, the whole world was affected, especially Australia. In this research, we examined the differences between modern South Australian climate conditions to the conditions during the last glacial maximum, when the ice age from the Arctic and Antarctica were closer to the equator. We also estimate the possibilities of a return of glacial maximum conditions in the near future. We also looked at if there was a possibility of a reoccurrence, how long until it happens. Australia is known for its sandy deserts in the centre of the country, but long before there were even dinosaurs in Australia, it was completely different. It's hard to imagine that this land was covered in ice, but during, but during the ice ages hundreds of millions of years ago, it happened, and there is evidence to prove this in our local rocks. At a place called Hallett Cove in South Australia, there is evidence collected by the Field Geology Club of South Australia of episodes of Earth's history that go back at least 600 million years. Most of this evidence has unfortunately eroded away and, and lost to ge geological records. Fortunately, results at the Hallett Cove Cons Conservation Park remain to be seen. About 280 million years ago, ice sheets covered two-thirds of Australia because at this time, Australia was connected to a supercontinent called Gondwana, it, which consisted of Africa, South America, Australia, India, and Antarctica. It was moving down south after separating from Laurasia, which consisted of North America, Europe, and Asia. And that means Australia was moving closer and closer to the South Pole. Evidence for these ice caps over Australia can be seen in chatter masks, crescentic gouges, both small, cur both small curved fractures, scratched and polished bedrock, as well as the remains of a U-shaped valley along the coast. South of Hallett Cove Beach, ab at, at about 270 million years ago, the, climatic the climate warmed and the ice sheets melted. Meltwater laden with fine rock flour and coarser material accumulated in layers on the floor of lakes. Boulders in ice space were released and dropped into very fine sediments, which can be seen on beaches at Hallett Cove, where there are large boulders scattered across the stony beaches, as shown on the slide. In the Pleistocene epoch, the most famous ice age had arrived. This ice age began approximately 1.8 million years ago, according to NOAA, paleo paleoclimatology. This was during the time when mammoths roamed most of, north of the Northern Hemisphere, while Australia had its own megafauna like Dipredodon and Thylacaleo, a marsupial lion. About 20,000 years ago, Australia was drier, but not necessarily warmer. In Australia, one of the only places that would have had glaciers was Tasmania. Sea levels were 120 metres lower than they are today due to the volume of water locked into ice sheets. All areas, including the tropics, were more arid than they are now. Sea levels were low enough that it was possible to island hop from Darwin to Sumatra. In modern times, the Adelaide metropolitan, metropolitan area is a short distance from the source of ocean water. Back then, the sea levels 
The sea levels was so low that the land would reach as far as Kangaroo Island, which is 120 kilometers from Adelaide. The Adelaide region in the Ice Age would have been drier than the conditions of modern times in terms of climate and the environment. Back then, the average temperature was six degrees lower due to and due to aridity, there would have been scrubland and semi-desert instead of temperate forests. From this graph as shown, we can predict that atmospheric CO2 and methane levels rise, so will global temperatures. It also shows that all past, past glacial maxima have had lower surface air temperatures and atmospheric <coughs> methane and CO2 levels than at present. Based on this, we can predict that as atmospheric CO2 and methane increase, global temperatures, temperatures will follow. We found a link between atmospheric methane and surface air temperatures of the last 400,000 years. It shows that as the atmospheric methane increases, the surface air temperatures increase as well. Atmospheric CO2 also follows a very similar trend. Another finding we made was the link to sea levels with both CO2 and methane levels. We found that with greenhouse gases were high, then there was a significant rise in sea levels, and when the greenhouse gases were at their lowest, sea levels had a significant drop. This is due to the cooler temperatures causing an increase in ice sheet volumes across Europe, Asia, and North America. The current sea levels reflect very closely the levels prior to the fall into the glacial periods in the past. One would be led to assume that a fall into a glacial period is likely in the near future, seeing as the current sea levels are very similar to what they have been prior to the fall into the previous glacial maxima. We isolated a time period before the Ice Age and compared it with the current records of atmospheric carbon dioxide. The trends in carbon dioxide are highly similar to those of methane gas. Carbon dioxide in the past has only ever reached 300 ppmv, whereas the very recent past, it has risen to around 400 ppmv. The top graph here shows a rise of about 100 ppmv on a time frame of about 10,000 years, whilst the lower graph shows a rise of 60 ppmv over a much shorter period of 30 years. The current records also started at a much higher concentration than that of the ice core records, shown by the graphs. Shown by the graphs, atmospheric CO2 and methane levels have risen dramatically in the last century. This contradicts what has happened in the trends of glacial and interglacial periods in previous times due to the time period. Human impact is thought to be a major reason for the rapid rise in greenhouse gases. Through the burning of fossil fuels, more emissions have gone into our atmosphere. We predict that a reoccurrence of, glacial of a glacial maximum in the near future is unlikely. Greenhouse gases continue to rise, as well as sea levels, and the temperatures will continue to rise. For there to be a glacial maximum in the near future, there will need to be a significant decrease in the atmospheric CO2 and methane to approximately 300 ppmv and 700. No one alive would now, no one alive now, would be able to find out if we will or will not return to a new glacial maximum. We would like to thank our teachers and, re and research that we've done for and our research resources for, for what they've done for us and thank you for watching.